Hey guys, did you uh did you know there was a damage cap in Wild Hearts? <laughs> Maybe. Nine, 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 nine. It cannot show any higher, and even the damage log is having a little bit of an error. Like, I, I don't know, I guess it's not point seven. What the hell? Welcome, then, my fellow hunters, to the best Karakuri staff build involving a playstyle that I imagine perhaps you haven't thought about using, and indeed, if you are already using it, well, I'm about to push it to its absolute limit, and it feels, I'll be honest with you, a little bit broken, a little bit too good, a little bit ridiculously strong. <laughs> You've seen just the open of the first zone against a mighty Deathstalker, and then he's immediately like, Nope, okay, I'm leaving, goodbye. What's actually going on here? Well, I want to go over the playstyle that this build entails before we go over the skills, because the skills will make a lot more sense once you know what we're actually doing here. It takes a long time to get to level 10 mutation doing it, you know, the normal way. Doing through your combo, doing the flash, cycling along eight different times. I don't want to do that. We're going to ignore it. You won't be using the normal attacks of the staff the entire time you are playing in this monstrously powerful way. What we will be exclusively using to build mutation meter is boxes and springs. You probably know this, but when you leap off a box, you can do a slam down that does very respectable damage, and then flash change in to the Tomfury Jewel Blades for another really good amount of damage, and you also get a lot of movement on this, you can actually position or get to safety while still dealing this damage. And this gives you two mutation levels at once, as opposed to just the one. That means two successful box attacks, and we can already use the Juggernaut Blade. From the spring, it's a big surge spinning blade forward, and then a flick staff over your head, which can catch kimono behind you for, again, two mutation meters. So you will essentially only be attacking with this build from box attacks, spring attacks, or juggernaut blade attacks. And let me tell you, it feels so good. That said, though, the most way you will spend your mutation meter is actually on a four-bar little, air quotes here, juggernaut blade attack, specifically the one from the spring. This does, for how easy it is to get to four mutation levels and execute it, absolutely, and I don't say this often, Nutty Cuckoo Bananas damage! This is really quite impressive, and essentially imagine the flow of two box attacks, one spring juggernaut blade, two box attacks, one spring juggernaut blade, ad infinitum until the monster crumbles in, well, no time at all before you. Now, of course, we can go to the full juggernaut blade combo, lock the kimono down in a chain trap, and let that happen, especially in multiplayer 2. You can really decide where you want to go with this, but we are all in on Karakuri combinations here. And that, of course, has shaped the skills, the armor, the weapon path we have gone for. So what have we gone for? Well, it is uh, the Golden Tempest helmet, the Lava Back chest, the Amaterasu waist and gloves, and uh, the Golden Tempest boots. Everything Human Path wear applicable, as this is indeed a Human Path build, because it kind of has to be, given how much Karakuri thread we will be using, but we'll get to that. Then, for your talismans, you want any of the skills that directly either affect Juggernaut Blade damage, affect damage after using or summoning a Karakuri, so the Coordination Furies, or just any useful utility skills that you think you really want to hunt with. These are the best five that I've got, and obviously adjust this to what you've randomly been given to. The weapon, then. 
as you can see, we have plus 70% Juggernaut Blade damage on top of uh, plus 22% Karakuri attack base damage. 16% from simply summoning one and an extra 6% when we incorporate one into an attack. I.e. you put a spring down to Juggernaut Blade and oh, it's now doing 22% more damage. Yeah. The way that we get here is fairly obnoxious and it might take you a while, but this is the path I went for. Now, you might be able to do this a little bit more efficiently than I did, but what matters is that you end up with two Giant Felling Blades, Coordination Fury and Sleight of Hand Fury. So when we look at our total skills then, how everything lines up, it is as follows. And you can see what's giving what on the right, which is quite nice that it does tell you that. I'm going to ignore random extra skills that are just sort of there from the armor and talismans that aren't really core or, you know, we didn't go deliberately for them. So, of course, we've got Kaleidoscope, which is just a nice little comfort skill. We have that 70% more damage on the Juggernaut Blade. Savage, just a little bit more attack. It's nothing too crazy. Then we get to Karakuri Coordination Fury, an extra 6% damage from uh, actually incorporating the basic Karakuri in your attack, i.e. the Spring Juggernaut Blade. Then we have ourselves Karakuri Coordination Remedy, and it's at this point that I do want to highlight this skill because it is a big deal with this build. Basically, what this means is an attack using a Karakuri, so the aerial attack from the box, the spring attack from the spring, etc., will heal you. And we are constantly using those attacks, which means we're actually getting really nice chunks of health back while fighting with this build, and that's really, really nice and comfortable and a really good little benefit to playing this way. We have Sleight of Hand Fury, and this gives us 32% damage for about 5 seconds after summoning a Karakuri, i.e. all of our attacks then are getting 32% more damage outside of a standing full 8 mutation levels Juggernaut Blade combo. Sadly, drawn weapon attacks don't work on the Karakuri staff, at least the Spring Juggernaut Blade. It doesn't count as a draw attack, so that's a little bit wasted, but it is what it is. And then we have a smattering of stamina skills, which are just nice to have because stamina is incredible incredibly valuable in this game and being able to dodge endlessly, sprint endlessly, you really feel how helpful that is, so it's a nice side effect of this set. Then we get 12% Verve. Verve is essentially peak performance if you've played Monster Hunter, but it's much better in Wild Hearts because it also gives defense. This means that we just take massively less damage when we're at full health, and I find that you are at full health most of the time in Wild Hearts. You don't really play with little bits missing, at least I don't. I always want to be on full health, especially against endgame monsters, and you'll have this up a lot. And of course we have that Karakuri Remedy which helps tops us off a lot and then reactivates Verve in time for the big hit so that synergizes quite nicely. And ultimately there aren't much better ways to gain damage from a human path build other than Verve. And we do want to be human path for, well, the champion skill Celestial Breath. What I'm convinced is probably the best skill in the game, and for a lot of weapons, arguably your most damaging skill too. What this will do is just slowly make your Karakuri thread tick up. You get an extra thread every 10 seconds or so. And as we are spamming crates and springs, well, that is essential to fueling this playstyle and this build, and it's the engine that powers it that makes you not feel like you have to constantly hunt his armor, constantly hunt down thread, and that is really lovely. So that's how everything comes together, and it really does come together. Basic Karakuri that you want with this is you need the crate and you need the spring, for obvious reasons. You need uh, the harpoon, as Chain Trap is your best at fusion Karakuri, here because obviously it will give you a full Juggernaut Blade combo without the kimono being able to do anything about it. At least, unless there's small kimono in the zone! I've never felt anything more infuriating than having the most damaging attack in the game cancelled by a rat! <laughs> anyway.
Anyway, and uh, then we want the glider because of its just general utility and usefulness and because it is the uh, responsible party for healing mist, which will help keep you topped up for verve activation so you get that damage without having to waste time drinking a healing water. That really is all there is then. A few little tips and tricks specifically. Your ideal opener is one of two things. Either you cheekily use a load of small kimono to get to eight mutation level before you even start the fight, and then you can open it with the most powerful attack combo in the game, which is lovely, but in a normal situation, what you want to do is preemptively just whack a chain trap on the floor, as that will come in handy. Then you want to use a crate attack so that you land kind of near the kimono, but not on him. Don't do the damage. You want the follow-up mutation attack to reach the kimono with the last couple hits, thereby getting the two mutation, triggering the raw, but giving you enough time to recover and then iframe roll the raw, which will then you immediately box again, getting in another full drop combo, and now you're at four mutation level. Then you could either go for a Spring Juggernaut Blade or use this opportunity with the pre-prepared Chain Trap to go the full way to 8 and do the full Juggernaut combo. And you can see just how effective it is. I spend more time chasing Kimono around the map than I do actually killing them using this build and playstyle. That then is my contribution to the Karakuri staff and how it be, and I hope you very much enjoy it yourselves as you work towards it. For now then, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice to reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye